So last time I took these turbo cans out to the wall, I ran into the problem that they didn't work with my normal wing cap adapters or the set cap adapters that are kind of primed up for the Rust-Oleum 2X painter's touch kind of style. So I was about to order some of those adapter caps and honestly, I thought to myself, why not try and make one first off before dropping the money on them? Especially seeing as, you know, these are three, four bucks a piece and they're great and they work well, but sometimes you just need something cheap and easy and accessible. And I've made some old school ones where you used to drill through the top of this uh, painter top cap and then just stick another cap right on top of it. Now, although the double cap can work, it raises the cap height quite a bit, even well beyond where the adapters do. But if you get yourself a handful of pens, you're gonna be much better off here. So even if you only get one adapter out of every pen at a box for three or four bucks, you know, that's honestly 12 different adapters for the price of one. So we're gonna hack our way into this and do a little DIY session here to get some adapters for both the turbo style, which have a much wider stem, as well as the painter's touch, which has that kind of more narrow stem. So getting into the tools you'll need, obviously the pens are a must. This is gonna be the base of our adapter. Some scissors are gonna also be a must. You know, chop those pens down. Some nice to haves, a pair of pliers, gonna be easier to rip out the ink. And lastly, the drill can be optional depending on what style of pen you go after. So I'll get into that as it comes. Forgot to mention, you're obviously gonna be able to salvage all the ink out of these pens. So maybe have some homemade ink on the way as well. So you're gonna to wanna to start by pulling the butt of the pen out and that'll actually expose the ink and kinda of ballpoint. You're gonna to wanna to save this little guy here. That's gonna be your adapter for the larger can. And then on the other side, you can also use the pen as one. So we'll pull that out. No need for the larger straw body. And now my favorite pen to use for this is actually the business source. Once again, definitely wanna save the front end there. Don't need the cap for anything. And this one has a slightly different tip so you pull that out, and you're actually gonna to wanna to save this blue portion here, so that can come right off the tip of there. That one's gonna start leaking ink immediately, so set that aside. Once again, pen body's garbage at this point. And then the classic Bic is kind of a middle ground here. It has that same colored tip, so that's gonna be great for a painter's touch. And then the butt end of this is actually a little bit too big, so don't quite recommend the Bic unless you're only going after the painter's touch adapters this is kind of impractical for the turbo size so basically all our bases are covered with those first two pens and we'll show you the little variety now so the easiest one to start with is the adapter for the painter's touch we're going to take the tip of this ballpoint pen and the larger side is actually going to go on the painter's touch and then we're going to trim this down to be sized up to take a regular cap so i got my pliers here you could also use your scissors and i'm basically going to chop off the ballpoint pen portion and there might be some ink in there or some of the ballpoint pen left over. Ooh, looks like ours just fell out. So just get rid of all that. You just want the plastic portion here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this tip a little bit with an X-Acto or your scissors just to flatten that off. So before we move forward, this is gonna be the side for our cap. So I'm basically gonna test fit that and see if it fits in there. And honestly, our first cut was perfect, so we're good to go on that front. Now we'll just trim down the other side. So a good gauge for how much to trim off of your adapter is to see this little knuckle here. It goes down maybe about a quarter of an inch, so you're gonna wanna trim the kind of skinnier side of this back to about that same length. Then you can just press that back circular. So I like to start by spinning this on a little bit, make sure that's seated perfectly kind of all flush down at the bottom, and then you can also spin on your cap slowly. Now it is kind of a funny larger stem here. It's well off the can, and the bonus to the adapters is that you're gonna get a little bit more stability here. You know, here you can see I can move and wiggle that cap a little bit, but for the price of next to free, this is gonna be uh, you know pretty much as good as you need to do just to get the job done. So let's move over to kind of the bigger portion here with the turbo size. So if you got those Office Depot kind of generic pens, you're pretty much all the way there, no tools required. You're gonna to wanna to trim off just the teeniest portion of the top of the pen. And that'll be your cap side. That'll fit in there nicely. And for the other side, we make it just about the same size as the last one. So just trim that down. It's basically all the same diameter inside of there no matter which length of the part you're on. And then all of that will seat just fine 
on top of your turbo size. So then you can throw your cap on there and you're good to go. Now if you don't have pens like that and you still have the butt available, most of these fit right actually on to the size of the turbo. You just have to drill a hole in the top of these. Good to have two different drill bits on hand. You're going to want uh, one eighth for the actual hole that's going to be taking the cap, and then you're going to want something smaller to do a little pilot hole. So I got my smaller bit here. I think this one is three thirty seconds. So basically, just try to center up the little butt and drill right through that. I'm sure there are plenty of caps out there that have different nozzle sizes. You know, some that lock up. But a good way to check: just eyeball it up there on the back of the cap and you should be good to go. And then we'll be able to have a turbo round two. Now these are pretty sticky on the caps themselves, so you're gonna to wanna to have a few on hand. They're not gonna be as interchangeable as a normal adapter is. It's pretty much stuck on there for good. Unless you got an extra pair of pliers to pull each of these off while you're at the wall. You know, honestly, I just recommend making five or 10 of these and having one for each style of cap you like to rock. And then sure enough, that size we checked before goes on there. And you can just spin it on lightly and then just your first press, make sure you really are keeping it straight up and down so it really seats itself well on that valve and you're good to go. Let's go rock these on the wall. We're definitely gonna need a sketch as well. So let's throw something down in the black book. I'm running low on my white buff paint, so we're going to try to get as much as we can out of it. And I also picked up some blue oops paint, so maybe we'll do a little bit of a fade or a gradient with as much as we can on the white at the bottom, and then kind of fade to a darker blue up top. I picked up this new roller as well. It's kind of this funky purple color, and it's supposed to work well with kind of deeper groove surfaces, a little rougher surfaces, and for this legal wall that's super uneven at times, held a little bit more paint. I wasn't going back and forth between the tray as much. Honestly, the normal one I rock with took maybe 30, 40 minutes to get the whole wall buffed, and this was about half that time, so I was super happy that the advertised rough surface worked quite a bit better. It covered better altogether, it was faster, so if your wall's a little bit more porous or uneven like this, definitely go check one of these out away from your standard roller. So I had those couple turbo cans that I was using to actually make the adapters with. And then I also picked up a few different blues in the Rusto. So we'll be rocking those right on the blue backdrop, a little complement on top of one another. And then uh, I think I just sketched this out with some color plays, had a can laying around. And you know, the color plays white's pretty easy to actually get a nice sketch down with. And for one dollar a can, you can't really go wrong there. Now that we got the sketch on the wall, let's break into the restos, get the adapter caps rolling there, and get this fill pushed on. So I got my bag of adapters. I'm gonna start with uh, just the regular painter's touch and go from there. Maybe use some of the turbos at the end for some of the 3D or force field. Take out a fresh cap. So we got one good gray dot left. Make your last. Now I'm not sure if anybody else has this problem, but hardware store paint valves are just so much stiffer in my opinion. You know, the variable pressure you get off of kind of those designer paint cans that we all love doesn't really come true when you're using the Rustos or the color plays. They get my hand worked out much faster than if I'm using like a 94 or something. So. No leaking.
definitely got to take my paces here and slow things down a little bit as compared to you know the speed I can normally go with some designer paints but but you know you really can't complain about the coverage from Rusto always just so spot on with one pass coverage even on the lighter colors I love the light blue here that I'm using kind of as my middle fade And honestly, for the price point and all together, with an adapter cap or two, you're going to really be able to make these cans stretch a little bit further than normal. Um, the turbos were a little bit interesting. You can see the cap almost gets stuck. Um, I don't really know why cans do this sometimes. It might be a, you know, a little bit difference in pressure than you know, the skinny cap is allowing versus that huge flare tip these are stocked with. So it kind of releases really slowly, so you get kind of this spurt that comes out after you release the can. So it wasn't super easy to get this laid in there, but given that it was kind of just a simple fill, I was able to go pretty slow and then cut back things later on. So ultimately, not as great as I would have hoped that the adapter worked on the turbo, but you know, once again, you've got a large can there, and with the bigger caps, it didn't seem to be as much of a problem. It was just when you really got down to these skinny lines that you had kind of had that weird release pressure. And all things considered, you're gonna to have to be a little bit more tailored in here and a little bit more particular with your, your lines. You're not gonna be able to be as free and forgiving as kind of the designer paints, but I was altogether super happy with how these were working out. Very, very vibrant colors. I had one little color mismatch, I had another blue I was hoping to do at the bottom of this fade, but its contrast was just way off, it was kind of way more fluorescent than the rest of this stuff, so it was kind of just sticking out, so I ended up just going with that white on the bottom as you see. Like I had mentioned, the cover coverage on the painter's touch is just really the top of the line for a hardware store paint. I'm able to get just as good cutbacks, and given that you have a little bit more characteristics and tailoring with the skinny cap, you know, I'm able to really lay down a line just as I would with much other cans. So I was super happy with that. And so now, although the pen cap adapter was a little bit kind of looser on top of the can, you know, like I said earlier, you can kind of pull it and push it back a little bit. It isn't totally as stable as your normal set cap adapter. But honestly, I didn't end up with any more paint on my hands than I did with a normal cap or a normal piece out on the wall, so there was really no complaints about leaking. I did have a couple caps that I slightly undersized on the turbos, but that shows itself right away, so maybe get a couple test sprays on these before you really commit to going out to the wall with them, just to make sure that they're kind of sealed on there and nice. These worked totally fine, you know, I had five or six on hand, so I was able to throw, you know, a skinny cap, a fat cap, and a medium tip all on them and kind of just trade those off on the cans and then also not have to spend 25 bucks for five different adapters this was a much more economic solution you know altogether this is a super budget piece it's maybe three four bucks a can i used three or four cans a little bit of roller paint so for maybe 25 bucks i had a full day out on the wall ton of fun and didn't have to go for the super designer paint so as always use the resources you can get your hands on use the kind of tools and techniques that help get you a little bit better without having to drop you know 
know, 25 bucks just on adapters before you even get the paint. And definitely go check out the dude who hit the other side of this wall. Ironically enough, he had his own set of homemade adapters that were pretty wild, rocking a full Rusto piece as well, and even tagging Rusto. The irony there is pretty wild and definitely has some killer stuff, so go check out his Instagram feed and uh, show him some love. Maybe also check out the last time I painted on this wall, did a fun little sketchy style that was a little bit looser and, you know, ironically enough, also used some Rustos. Hopefully you learned a little bit, enjoyed following my process. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.